Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Robo Geisha, a Japanese action comedy from 2009 that was directed by Noboto Iguchi. Special effects director is Yoshihiro Nishimura. Now I still remember when Robo Geisha first came out. There was a bit of internet hype behind it, because it was from the same creators of The Machine Girl and Tokyo Gore Police, both films that I've reviewed on my channel, and those films came out the year before and made a pretty big splash with fans of cult cinema. Now, unfortunately, the reception of Robo Geisha was not nearly as positive as those films. Consequently, I never hear anyone mention this movie nowadays. Even fans of the subgenre of Japanese, like, gore comedy action films seem to have either forgotten about it or just don't really like it enough to mention it, you know, amongst the better ones or their favorites. So I wanted to revisit it and see if it holds up better on a repeat viewing all these years later. Now the overall story is about two sisters who do not like each other very much, and they compete to ascend the ranks of a secret geisha robot assassin, uh, assassination squad. Now the opening scene is actually pretty entertaining. We have a politician, he's attacked by a robotic geisha and two scantily clad assassins who are wearing Tengu masks on their faces. And the Tengu is like a Japanese uh, legendary creature. It's a pretty fun scene. Some good fight choreography. And even a few surprises that uh, you might not see coming. So Robo Geisha actually begins fairly well. Then we go into flashback mode. Our maid character is a girl by the name of Yoshie. Who is a servant for her sister Kikure. Uh, a geisha in training. And it's later revealed that these two sisters were orphaned, and though they used to be close, they are now enemies. And both are eventually recruited by the secret organization of assassins, but conflict looms. Now after that crackling little opening scene, this movie, it gets kind of bogged down in a dull story. Now, let's be honest, like the story should not ever really be that important in films like this. These modern Japanese you know, gore comedy action flicks tend to be so excessive with their violence that the plot is usually just kind of like a bridge between the action scenes. Now, in the case of Robo Geisha, however, there is a major lack of extended action set pieces for much of, like, the middle hour. You know, there's a few little short ones peppered in, but that's it. And that automatically places more stress and emphasis on the story. And since the script writing is weak, that kind of becomes a problem for this film. Now, there is conflict between the sisters. One is likable, the other one is not likable. But it does get kind of repetitive fairly quickly. It's not really uh, nuanced or deep or anything like that, right? It's too shallow to hold interest by itself. There's another group of side characters that come in. They're trying to, like, rescue one of the girls in the Geisha Assassin group. Um, not really that interesting of a subplot. You know, even Naoto Takanaka has a supporting role in this, and even his character is mostly boring for much of the film, which is kind of inexcusable. I wish they would have just focused on the assassination jobs and maybe some good external conflict. Uh, the stuff with the Geisha assassin organizations is kind of flimsy. They didn't even take the opportunity to kind of explore some of the details or intricacies of, of Geisha training. You know, I've, I've personally met... Uh, about half a dozen Mako, or Geisha in training, during my vacations in Japan, and uh, I would have, like, lunches with them, you know what I mean? And there would be an interpreter there, and they would do a little performance and ask questions. And the, pro the profession is more interesting than you might think. You know, the movie doesn't even really bother to explore it at all. You know, it's just kind of there. And you're like, well, this movie's not supposed to be deep, but take something like Dead Sushi. Dead Sushi, uh with uh, Rina Takeda, that movie actually does get into some detail on how sushi is prepared, how you're supposed to eat it, the type of fish that are in it. So even that film, you know, same, same subgenre of film, it had a little bit more detail and attention to the, the you know, the basic, like, um, I guess, profession at play here. This movie doesn't really do that. You have to get a little bit, but not enough. I think it's lacking. The silly humor, it is amusing at times. There's an assassination attempt in a forest. Uh, there are a few geisha training sequences that are just played for laughs that I kind of liked. Some of the weapon designs will probably make you laugh 
They made me laugh. So there are some chuckle-worthy moments in this to enjoy. That, that does help that middle section a little bit. And, uh, you know, helps to make up a little bit for some of the other flaws. Now, the action set pieces are kind of limited. The opening scene, nice start. And then in the middle, you get these little ones peppered in. There's a, there's a fight in a tall grass area. Pretty good. Nothing really memorable. And some of the moves are kind of copied from the Machine Girl, I thought. There's a brief confrontation involving Tempura, but we already had that in the Machine Girl as well, and that scene was better in that film. Uh, most fortunately, the big finale of Robo Geisha, it has some highly creative moments in it. It really does. I mean, there's no way you're going to see something like this probably ever again in a movie, let's be honest. They infuse elements from a few different types of films, which I won't spoil for you. And uh, it, it works. It works. There are some a few pretty fantastic individual moments during the end of the film. I just wish the rest of the film, just, or especially the middle section, had a little bit more of that energy and fun to it. All I want to see is a robotic geisha killing people. I mean, let's be honest. Or fighting other robotic geishas or whatever. And uh, there wasn't enough of that in this film, I think. The violence is a little bit lighter than something like Tokyo Gore Police, which gets a little edgy and uncomfortable at times. So you won't even get that from this film. A lot of it's CGI. Um, you know, you get that from all of these films to a degree. Uh, but this one seemed to be even more focused on CGI. So, and it's not high grade, so beware of that. And, uh, but there's still enough creativity in this film to enjoy in terms of, like, the weaponry, you know, the different, like, robotic, uh, uh, effects and stuff like that, a general craziness, and the memorable finale. Oh, and if you listen to the, like, the theme tune of this that repeats... Is that a ripoff of Live and Let Die? I'm pretty sure it was a ripoff of Live and Let Die. Uh, unless I'm... You know, if you watch the film, let me know what you think about that. Now, in conclusion, I think Robo Geisha has the same exact problems that I remember from 10 plus years ago. It really, it really does. Uh, you know, the beginning is strong. The ending is outlandishly entertaining. That middle section, though, is it's just weak. It's weak. Uh, you know, I forced to decide I, I would probably give this a pass grade just because it has enough to get you through it. But it's a huge downgrade from Machine Girl and Tokyo Gore Police. And even looking back on it, I can understand why so, uh, some people were really uh, disappointed with this film. So obviously, if you have not seen the Machine Girl or Tokyo Gore Police, you start with those. Maybe move on to some of the other types of films, that uh, a few of which I might cover uh, in the next month or two as well. Dead Sushi, watch that before this. You know, Robo Geisha is the one that you kind of watch on the back end while you're exploring this subgenre of film. It is available on Amazon streaming and physical media. The stream has the English dub only, and the English dub, it is kind of funny at times. I'll give it credit for that, but, uh, you know, like most films, you probably want to watch it with the Japanese uh, and English subs. So, still, those are my thoughts on this one, and as always, I'll see you next time.